Hello everyone, in this video, I'd like to set up the Ethernet IP communication between Alan Brantley, Compax Logix, and Schneider Modicon M251 controller. And I will use the real hardware to show how can we set up the communication between the L30 ERM, the Compaq Logix, and Schneider Modicon M251. And Alan Brantley side will run as Ethernet IP scanner, the master. And the Schneider TM251, I will use the port 1 as the Ethernet IP adapter, the device role. And I will show how can we set up, especially for the assembling ID, input 100 and output 150. Okay, let's shift to the software and let me show how can we do this. Okay, let's firstly go to the Schneider software machine expert. I'm using version 2.0 and let's open. And this is the latest platform echo structure machine expert version. And I create one project it named Ethernet IP adapter communicate with Alambrani controller. And I'm using TM251, this controller, MESE. Logically, this controller has Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. And their functionalities are now the same. So if we are going to run this controller as Ethernet IP adapter, we will use the Ethernet 1, this port. So when we click this add, and we will see it provide us two functions. So one is Ethernet IP, the adapter function. One is mode bus TCP. So here we will add one. Add this Ethernet IP function. When we double click here, we will see this area show up. If you recall, I use Ethernet underscore 2, this port running as Ethernet IP scanner function before. That time, we need to click add this Ethernet manager at first. And then we are able to add other Ethernet IP devices, adapters, because this underscore 2, this port can run as a master. So when we add this manager at first, and then we are able to add any other targets, the devices. Okay, this ports, these two ports, their roles, they are now the same. Keep in mind this. So in this case, we will run this controller as the adapter, the device function. So we will use the port one. This is very easy. When we add from here, when we add this Ethernet IP, and we will only see this area and the mapping. The two important parameter for the Ethernet IP communication setup, that is a assembly number for input and an output. Okay, this input, that means this is the target to the originator, basically from the adapter to the scanner. Okay, that's instant that is 100. And the size default, this is the 20. But keep in mind that the 20 here, that is the word. Okay, that's the word. And the output assembly in this direction that come from the originator to the target. This output means this is the master size row. The master send the data from the master to this device. Okay, this is the originator to the target. Target means this is a device, this is an adapter. And the instant number, this is 150. We better not change this number, but we definitely can change the size. For example, in this case, I can set even 100, let's try, 100 word, okay. Basically, we are communicating 200 bytes for input and output, okay. Both direction, we send 200 bytes, okay. That's a lot of data. And then we can go to the Ethernet IP slave IP mapping here. And from here, we can see it's starting from the zero for the input and uh, if we scroll down and we will see it's from 0 to 99, 100 words. And for the output, we will see start from 0 and to 99, output 100 words. Okay. And this line, this is the PLC variable. And default PLC assigned 0 to 19, 20 words for input and output. And we can manually create the variable and uh, mapping the PLC variable to the Ethernet IP, this mapping. 
And we can also see here, if we double click this variable, this variable come from this IO config global mapping. It declared as a word and this address 100% this IW0. So it declared either this way. So you can manually create the variable from the application tree. And from the global variable list, and you can create the variables. Okay. So in this case, we'll mainly focus on the communication. So I will use this 0 to 19 as an example. Okay. But our actual size for the communication, we are communicating 100 words for input and output. Okay, we are communicating 100 words for input and output. Okay, quickly review the IP address setting. So for this port 1, I assigned 192.168.1.221 for this device. And if we double click this area, we will see this port, that's the 1.221. Okay, and now we can save and download. Okay, let's download. Perform start. Okay, we start up this controller and now everything shows okay. But keep in mind, the green icon showing here doesn't mean this communication setup and communicating correctly now. Because I haven't set up the Alan Brownlee side this Ethernet IP adapter haven't had Ethernet IP scanner yet, the master side yet. This icon just show this device itself is running properly. Keep in mind this status here. And now before we go to the Alan Brownlee side, let me go to the IE browser. 192.168.1.221. I can browse this controller. Log in into the web page. I said the same as the controller login. Go to the diagnostics and go to the Ethernet. And from here, we are using this Ethernet port 1. So its IP address is 1.221. Okay. And we will see here the scanner status and the Ethernet IP status. This represents the Ethernet IP scanner port. That basically that's the port two. When the port two running as Ethernet IP scanner, then we can use the scanner status and uh, the device status to monitor something, to diagnose something. But for the port one, it doesn't have a page to show the port one to show if this device can find the scanner. There's no page you can show that. Keep in mind this. Okay. But when we shift to the maintenance screen, and uh, we will see here Ethernet IP config files. Here we can download the TM251 generic EDS file. If you did the Ethernet IP communication before, if we have an EDS file, that will be super easy. However, here you need to be very carefully. This EDS file has something wrong, or we will say haven't totally completed yet. This EDS file doesn't have the real configuration, the assembly number 100 and 150, the assembly input and the output number in that EDS file. So we cannot directly use this EDS file. I can still download this EDS file. You can, from here, you can right click and download. I can show from the Alan Brownlee side, if we import this EDS file, what will be, what will show, okay? But this EDS file cannot work properly. According to the manual of the Schneider manual, this shows you have to manually edit this EDS file. But adding that EDS file is not that super easy or is not that super straightforward. I would recommend we will use alternative way just to set up the generic file from Alan Brownlee side. We can set up this communication much easier. Okay, so let's shift to the Alan Brownlee side. The Alan Brownlee side, I'm using Studio 5000 and I will install the EDS file, but this just for a demonstration showing the issue from the EDS file. All right, this is the Alan Brownlee side. Currently, I'm using Studio 5000 version 32, this version, and the controller, what I'm using, that's the L30 ERM, this Alan Brownlee controller, Compact Logics controller. 
And after we install the EDS file, firstly, I can show what the issue from this EDS file. So if from the Ethernet area, we can click this new module. And let's search 251. So we can find this EDS file we installed. That's Schneider, okay, TM251. We can create. And uh, we can firstly name that M251, okay? And we can assign the one IP address. The target IP address is a 221, this IP address, okay? And uh, we can also click this change. So this area can give us some clue. So write the data to 150. That means from the Allen Bradley side, it can transmit the data to the 150, this assembly number, and is using the output channel, is communicating 40 bytes, okay? And if I click this read data 100, that means this is the input assembly ID 100, and we can read this size 40 bytes, okay? And this is a suffix number, one, two. If we click here, And uh, we click OK. OK, after we install this, everything looks OK. However, if we go to the controller tags, this EDS file cannot project all the variables, that 40 bytes input and output for us. There are some issues from their EDS file, or the EDS file need to be manually added. However, this is a slightly complicated for the user. So I will not use this EDS file for this communication. Okay, so from here, I can delete that. I will directly manually add this generic file to communicate with this device. Okay, this time, let's type in the generic. Okay, we can select this generic Ethernet module. Okay. This is a generic Ethernet module. So here we can name that, uh, this is the TM251, okay? And here the IP address, that is the 192.168.1.221. And this is the IP address, is a Schneider, the TM251 IP address. And the format, if you recall, when we set up the 100, that unit, that is the word. So because that's the word, here we need to select the integer, okay? That means two bytes. And here the input and the output. So if you recall from the Schneider side, this is the Schneider side, when we set up this Ethernet IP adapter, so this instant number for input, that's the 100 instant number ID. And the length is 100 words. And output, that from the originator to the target, that's the 150. So we will set the same parameter at the master side. Okay, let's shift back to the Alan side. So in this case, the input, this is the 100. And the output, this is the 150. Here, that's showing 16 bit, that because we selected the integer. So the length, this is the 100, okay? And the output, this is the 100, okay? And here, the configuration, so we can select one, but actual size, that's a zero. We can select this way. Okay, let's click OK. Okay, we manually set up this generic file, and uh, again, we are using the 100 for the input, 150 for the output assembly ID, and the configuration, that's the one. The so unit, that's the word, that's the integer here. And uh, if we go to the connection here, the RPI, this is a setting for the cyclic time for the communication. We can leave a 10 as a default or even higher, 20 milliseconds. Okay, depends on the cycle time of your data communication. Now we are still offline, we config. And so far this IO, this indicator from the Allen Bradley controller is dark, it's still off now. So we are going to download. And after we download successfully, we will see as long as this controller find out this adapter, this IO will lead up, okay? 
So now we can download, compile, and download. And my Alan Brani controller, this is the 1.191, this IP address. Okay, let's download. Okay, now let's start up this controller. All right, once the controller start up, we'll see this IO indicator show solid on. That means actually this behind the Ethernet IP communication, they set up, they communicate already. And if we go to this generic file, we are online now, if we double click, we'll see this is running. Okay, that means this controller is communicating with this device. Okay, this is our Schneider Multicom TM251. And then we can go to the controller tag, and this is the input and this is the output here. We will see we set up 100 words. This array, that's the integer 100 from zero to 99. Okay, 99. Okay, and uh, output that array also 100 from zero to 99. So we can set up the zero here. As for example, for example, I can set up 100 and uh, here 101. And uh, let's go to the bottom 99. Okay, 99 here, I can set up 199. Okay, because all here that means we are transmit the value from the Allen Brownlee side to the Schneider side. Okay, we can verify if the data can be received correctly from the Schneider side. Okay, let's shift to the ICO structure software. All right, we shift to the Schneider side and then let's go to this Ethernet IP slave IO my pin. So let's watch this input buffer now. We are online now, okay? So we will see the zero is receiving 100. One, that it received 101. If we scroll down, we monitor the 99, we will see 199 is receiving here. That means this communication is correct. And now we can set the value. This output means from the Schneider side, it can transmit the data to this buffer and the Ethernet IP will transfer this value to the master. Okay, so we can set up the value. Okay, we can set up value from here. For the output from the Schneider to the Allen Brandy, we can set up uh, 200, 201, and scroll down, go to QW99 here, we can set up 299, okay? And don't forget, we need to click the debug and the write the value. So this prepared value will transfer to the current value. Okay, and now let's shift to the Alan Brandy side and let's verify. And if we scroll up, this is the input. Okay, the zero we receive 200 from the Alan Brandy side. One, two, zero, one. And if we scroll down, it received 199 at 99, this index. Okay, that means this communication is correct. And now if I unplug the port at this Alan Brani side and we will see this status. Okay. And now if I unplug this Schneider controller, so we will see this IO indicator show up. It's notice us this device is communication wrong. Okay, and we will see this connecting is not showing in the running anymore, faulted. Okay, and now if we plug in again, okay, after three seconds or four seconds, the system communication recovered. Okay, and now let's shift back to the Schneider side. If we double click this Ethernet IP here, and uh, there's nowhere to show the actual status. If we double click here, 
and only show the IP address online status. Okay, here you need to keep in mind the status doesn't show the actual connection. It just shows this device is running. But if this adapter lose the master, it doesn't show anything. If now I disconnect the master, there's no any indication or error showing at here. So if I unplug, so I unplug this master, and firstly we will see the indicator showing at this controller. It doesn't show any fault. And the same thing from the software side, the software. It doesn't show anything. And uh, from this input, and from this input, the input changed to zero. It lost the data. But there's no any place to show the actual connection status. So personally, I would recommend you can use one channel, one value from this input buffer you can send one heartbeat signal. If the heartbeat signal cannot be toggled or cannot be on anymore, that means your connection dropped. Then from this slave side, you can do something, right? You can turn off all the output to prevent the wrong control. This you need to be very carefully here. And from the web page, we will see the web page doesn't show any status. So this web page doesn't show any difference. If this controller, the Ethernet IP scanner lost, system logs file, post configuration, So we'll see, it doesn't show anything for this disconnection. Okay, this need to be keep in mind. But all in all, this configuration is very simple. Basically, at here, we add this Ethernet IP and we config this input and output to this assembly number. And from the Allen Bradley side, we just need to set up this generic file and manually set up this input and output and the configuration number. Keep in mind this size you need to match with Schneider software side. Okay, this is a demonstration, the Ethernet IP communication between the Allen Brani and the Schneider TM251 controller. All right, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.